Hi, my name is Sam Price, the Crypto Lifer, and every single Friday, I'm going to be giving you a macro analysis, um, technical analysis, based on what's happening in the charts for Bitcoin. Total, total three, Bitcoin dominance, U.S. Tether dominance, the DXY, S&P futures, and gold. Gold having a big week. It's interesting to see what's happening for gold. Let's going to start here with Bitcoin. We're going to break it down. One thing that I'm a big fan of is a golden cross on a big time frame. Uh, right here, we're having a 50 weekly moving average crossing the 200. That is a big, big deal. Um, even front running that idea usually propels a pretty big move to the upside. And so far it has. If you're watching my channel on a daily basis, I talked about the fact that we would stay above this resistance line here. And as long as we did, we were bullish. I talked about when you get above the 200 SMA, the explosiveness of price action. Went over it in my weekly screen share last night where I showed all different versions of it using the replay tool. Amazing, amazing time. I suggest you jump into my trading group where you get that once a week weekly screen share, which will change your life. That alone is worth the $99 emission fee, I'm telling you right now. But once you got above this, boom, this thing was gone, right? So here you have it. Uh, Bitcoin getting above and holding above the 200 SMA. We had a really big move. Let's talk about the weekly. You know, right here, of course, resistance. Once we got above that, the next big resistance was this area right here at about 37.5. We tackled with it for a little while, but once we got above it, we were doing well. Then we boomed out against this, where these two candles stopped right there, which was a resistance at 39,000. And there really wasn't anything until you saw where these two candles stopped right there on the weekly at about 43,000. So Bitcoin had really nothing to stop itself. That's why there was really no reason, no big boys, no one taking big profits until we got to that area. And then we even pushed above it. And now you can see we have a little bit of chop here, a little bit of chop. We boom this up. It's where these two candles close right there and where some wicks happen, right? Not a, and it's still, it's not that hard. That, it's, not that, it's not a lot of resistance, but it's all we got. And so we have resistance at about 45,000, 449, all right? That's our next area to go for. Really, up until then, there's really no resistance. Suggest that we can easily get all the way back up to 449, 45,000 before our next slight resistance. And even then, uh, we push up. I keep looking at the VRVP too, right here, um, you know, on the right side here. You can see above my head there and see this gap. We went through it nicely. Boom. See this gap? We're moving through it nicely. We're likely to get to this high volume node here. Sorry, at 47, I can bring this with me, at 47,800. I mean, that's the key. And look, we have another gap here to bring us up to 57,000. And I remember seeing these gaps here when I was at 22, like, oh, we can get to 29, we can get to 30. And all of it has happened kind of as I projected it and saw it. So this tells me that 57,000 isn't even that far away. And uh, new all-time highs aren't that far away for Bitcoin. As this having is going to, I I think, present a more of a crazy frenzy. We're going to have, you know, big-time ETFs, big companies, big money, and a lot of other things brewing for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin on the weekly looking really nice. Now, is there a pullback coming? We are away from the 21 on the weekly. That usually tells me that, you know, our time is ticking. We're going to have to get some type of pullback. This pullback, the same here on the five-day. We have to come back to the 21-day moving average. It's just what has to happen. However, the three-day now picking up with another bullish candle. I didn't want to see, you know, this was almost going to close bearish, but it did not. Pretty interesting to see uh, on the three-day chart. The daily also showing signs of a big move now. And the 22-hour, even today, just now, in the last few minutes, Bitcoin showing signs that this four-hour wants to break out of a flag that it's in. So now we're watching this Bitcoin flag on the four-hour time frame. And I didn't want to get too small, but I also wanted to leave you with the most info I could give you at this present moment in time. And this tells me Bitcoin could get the 50,600. I mean, that's the measured move. The smaller measured move on somewhere here at about 47, 46,007. But this is explosive. And right now, you, you have legs on the momentum on the indicator, the stochastics. You're, you're getting far apart on the moving averages, but you still have some movement there. And, um, you know, some bears did play it out and we did, the bears really couldn't take us past this key area where people bought back in at 43,000 and it was weekly support. As you can see, it's still hanging out there right now. So weekly support held at 43,140. We got a big move back to the upside in the last few hours. Um, in the last 12 hours, Bitcoin has really made a beautiful pump back up from 43,000. And now it's just seeing if it can get through. Now you can see we have resistance locally at 44,100. We're going to have to break above that to remain bullish. But once we get above that, it's 45, and then it's 47,000. There's really not a lot of resistance in Bitcoin's way. Moving forward to total, the total market cap. If you were watching me, you know, we were showing this ascending triangle and saying, hey, the measured moves to $1.62 trillion, and we got all the way here to 1.59. Six, about to go to 1.6. And this could spill over to the next bigger resistance at 1.65. When we get rid of the moving averages on the weekly, 
But right here, just before we do that, look, the 50 is about to cross that 200. It's going to take some time, maybe a couple weeks. It takes time there. About to on a weekly is like five weeks from now, you know. But that's a, a very bullish sign, too, that we're going to have a bigger move for Bitcoin. What's the big levels to watch? I mean, our only resistance right there is 1.66. Once we get above that, there's a smooth move up all the way to $2.14 trillion. All right, $2.14. We'll be back into the $2 trillion level. And we're a serious asset class now at $1.59 trillion. I mean, start to put our mark on the world. When Bitcoin gets back to 50K, remember, it gets to a trillion dollar asset all by itself. That's going to be a big deal. So I am, you know, ooh, thank you for subscribing there. The total market cap looking absolutely beautiful. Uh, I like what I'm seeing here. And it's interesting uh, to say the least. It's interesting to say the least. If we go to the smaller time frames, there should be a pullback to the 21-day two, 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 moving average. That's something that we're looking for. But as long as we can hold resistance and get one more big push further to the upside, the smaller time frames, I'm still watching this little mini flag that has broken out. It's telling me they were about to get to $1.65 trillion. I'd love us to get above this area. If we look back on like the 10-day or the 8-day, that's a key resistance right there. We break above it, then we could go out sideways a little bit, let the market cool off before our next leg to the upside. But, you know, I do see a pullback coming if we can't get above that level. If that, that becomes resistance, some type of pullback in this area, to me, makes sense. Uh, we've on, been on such a rally. You know, we've gotten everything we needed. Like, everything is broken out. It's awesome. All coins has just been absolutely ripping. This is the total market cap of all the all the all the all, all the coins, every coin in the entire space, right? So it's looking pretty bullish for a continuation further to the upside. Even the eight hours got this swinging swing back up, showing signs that we could definitely get one more big push, one point six five trillion dollars. Total three is the market cap of all the altcoins, and you can see they're at a similar area, right at a resistance point. We get about four hundred fifty five billion. We will rip all the way up to 529. And that's going to be a nice, smooth move. You can see, too, we have a big gap here in the VRVP showing the next big notch in volume is at 691 and 794. Uh, once this brews, this is when people are going to really start getting into alts and get excited, you know. And always November into December before uh, before a, uh, a halving always becomes a pretty crazy time. I've seen it many times in, 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 in cryptocurrency, so I can see it again here. Big move. As long as we get above this key resistance, I see a bigger move coming, at least a 529. Then we go from there. But wow, uh, things are moving pretty nicely here for the altcoins. They are very, very bullish. If we go to the daily time frame, even the daily has taken off. We're just at this resistance. You know, if we can't get above this resistance, expect a pullback and some type of retest. Well, if we get above this resistance tonight or the next two days, expect a bigger move all the way for the altcoins to 529 in, in some type of explosiveness for all of them because that's just, this is the total market cap of all the altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. You see how it says it right back there, excluding BTC and ETH. Take a look at Bitcoin dominance. You know, for altcoins to really get a bit of a pump too, we need Bitcoin dominance to at least go somewhat sideways or cool off. Bitcoin dominance has just been on an absolute tear. You know, a couple, couple weeks of pull, pullback with just multiple weeks of pumpage. Bitcoin's bullish right now, right? And it would be nice if we did even just a few weeks, but I wouldn't be surprised if it just continues to pump and Bitcoin dominance continues to take market share. And the reason being is too is, you know, stocks aren't as strong as Bitcoin. Bitcoin was a better performer than the stock market the last month, and so was all the cryptocurrencies. Uh, you know, we've been 5Xing, 10Xing, while you've been able to maybe double up 50, 60, 20%. You know, like my, I made a big gain on Mara. It was like 70%, 80%, but nothing compared to what I've been making on the altcoins. So, you know, people start to realize, they hear their friends talking, they see the gains, they want the gains, and that's creating a Bitcoin dominance feature because people are getting into Bitcoin first when they enter into this crypto market, then they're venturing into other coins and finding out more about ecosystems and stuff, but Bitcoin is really the first stop for a lot of people when they hear about cryptocurrency and they start getting in, so it just, you know, that dominance continues to grow as Bitcoin continues to kind of, uh, as people start to learn more about cryptocurrency, it just gets into Bitcoin, you know. So what do we say? I mean, we're out of resistance. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we make a, you know, a nice symmetrical or ascending triangle here, come down and go up and down a little bit of a pullback as people get a little more excited into altcoins, you know, but for the most part, I mean, we're seeing some bullishness. The daily looks good for that pullback. So let's look at what's happening here because the weekly's got information, but we really want to see. So the daily is saying, hey, we can get this nice pullback to this trend line. So far, the altcoins have been ripping a little bit. A little bit of Bitcoin dominance has been reaching. This is good. You want this. This is when Bitcoin's, you know, altcoins rip. So we want this come come down. 
couple more days. The weekend this is setting up for another weekend pump for the altcoins, right? Because tomorrow, Saturday, you're going to lose some Bitcoin dominance and boom, oh my gosh, we'll have a nice pump for the alt. So that's a good setup. You want to look for that when you're about to trade, especially on a Friday afternoon. Very, very interesting. U.S. Tether dominance. We mapped it out inside the symmetrical triangle. They usually do break to the downside, even though they're 50-50 patterns. And lo and behold, we did break down. That came with that Bitcoin pump. We lost the high volume node there, knowing that there's a gap. And our next stop would be 458. So far, we are doing that. Also, whenever you lose these moving averages, the 21 and the 80 right here, and the 100, you're going to come to the 200 SMA. I practice this and preach it all the time. You hear it from me every single week if you're watching these weekly macro analysis. So there's your 200 SMA. That's likely your, your destination. You pulled the wick here, you know, the length of the back here. Boom. If you go to somewhat of a smaller time frame, you can see that was clearly a descending triangle that wanted to break down. We lost the 200 on the three-day and the four, you know, and that's how I knew things were going to get really crazy. We're going to get massive dumpage. So whenever you lose a 200 SMA, and if you flip this upside down, it's just like gaining a 200 SMA. You get a really big pump up, you know. So you want to heed these, these moving average crosses on every time frame from the three-day up. They're very substantial. This tells me that we have more to go, and this is curving down, and the three-day chart should continue to go further to the downside for now, and that means people are going to be, you know, getting into alt. So that's what we want to see. You see how we see Bitcoin dominance? That also wanted to give a bit of a pullback, and so did Tether dominance. That means money is not going to escape the crypto sphere. It's going to stay inside and go into altcoins. Uh, this is setting up for tomorrow being pretty big for altcoins. I would expect some type of Saturday rally for altcoins. This is just what's kind of brewing. Um, and even into the next few days, is that's the three-day chart. Moving forward to the dollar index. The dollar index had a major resistance at this place where we thought it would at 106.9033 because resistance, resistance, resistance. It was a long-term resistance all the way from 2022, even back here in July of 2022. So we look at now, and you know we're struggling with this, this area here. That should be our next resistance, and it is. The dollar has tried to spike up recently. In the last week, it had a little pump up as Bitcoin went a little sideways. But all, honestly, uh, it's been pumping somewhat with Bitcoin, right? And that can happen. You know, that can happen. The dollar is connected to a lot of other currencies throughout the world. So, you know, if people were bailing on the yen or other things and, and pumping the dollar up, that can also have an effect on the dollar regardless of what Bitcoin is doing. Everyone thinks they're completely inversely co correlated, and they are, but there's other factors that uh, affect the dollar. Look at my video here uh, about the DXY. Check it out. If you can, it's pretty awesome. So we do see, look, a shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. We have a previous resistance that we've hit. I'd love to see this one hour, this daily, start to fall further back down. Respect this trend line and fall back to the bottom of the trend line. You know, now let Bitcoin rise get a bit more. This helps the altcoins. This helps everything from real estate to stock markets because if you're priced in the dollar and you're an asset that can't be made again, and dollar starts to drop, you're gonna make, you're gonna go up in value. That's just kind of how it is, right? So we're looking for this overbought DXY uh, to come further to the downside. Right now, it's attempting to try to make a move. If we see it break above 104.43, our next big move up is to 105.78. Is that likely? Right now, the daily says no way. The four hour says it could happen, but we are we are making a low, a high, a low, and a lower high. Let's see if we can put in that lower low somewhat of a slanted double top and start to make our move to the downside. I'll check on this when I go to bed tonight and in the morning and, uh, you know, throughout the next week as well. So we want to see this M pattern play out. We want to break further to the downside here for the DXY. ES1, remember, I gave you this cup and handle when it happened here. <whistles> Boom. I gave you this bottom of the market back in October of 2022. I gave you the bottom of the market now. Remember when we found the, the divergence here in October of 2023, both were very extreme bullish divergences that I was able to call out. Also, this was the cup with the handle that I talked about. So far, the cup and handle has broken to the upside. I gave this trade right there with the stop loss. It's still in the money on the S&P. I have since deleted it. I guess I was doing a bunch of work, but I've, you know, unless did I leave a grouping of it, I may have, you never know. Boom, there it is. So there's the trade I gave right there at 41.123 about, or 41.119. I mean, that's still in the money. Greatly, absolutely lovely. All right. So if we look at this on the weekly, I mean, I see us consolidating inside of like what looks to me like somewhat of a symmetrical triangle, almost a bull pennant in a way. And, you know, we have a resistance clear, clearly defined. Let's take a look here on the weekly. So we have a resistance right here at 4605, right? 46, yeah, 4,609. And, you know, we 
boosted through that. Like that was an area that we, you know, okay, once we got above that, we've kind of broken the trend line in my humble opinion. And this is a breakout. And I am going to use smaller time frames just because I want to show you what I was seeing here. I was, I was seeing that this fly could break to the upside with the measured move really further down almost right here. That's like my whole measured move on the S&P. And so far we got the move, you know. Being a crypto trader, this is so ugly watching price action just like make gaps all over the place. But that's what happens when you trade, you know, the traditional markets. TradFi, horrible, absolutely horrible. But anyway, uh, the S&P did break out, I suggested, almost to the target. You know, I don't know how to make sense of this now. It says the four hours overbought. I would expect some type of flag on the S&P. And then a continuation to the upside. All right? They're printing money. Uh, there's no other way. They got themselves in a hole. You know, they keep asking. The politicians keep voting for more spending. They keep saying they're going to do things that cost money. They're going to have to print. Once they print, they're going to make the value of all these other things go up in value. You just need to be on the right side of history. You need to be on the right side of Bitcoin, all right? And, um, you know, not financial advice, but Bitcoin has changed my life. And if you just let it and learn a little bit, you'd be surprised what it could do for you. Uh, last but not least, let's take a look at gold. I was looking at this cup and handle on gold. You know, been watching it since around here in 2021 and before. This cup started in 2011, if you can believe it. Um, it's a very giant cup, right? Basically a nine-year cup. Then the handle, gold finally breaking out. I mean, this tells me that gold, even if it does a little pullback and it comes back to 16, which it may happen because they manipulate gold all the time, I see it eventually getting to $2,800 an ounce, you know. And it may happen earlier. It may happen by 2026, but definitely by 2027. Sitting at 2000 is such a beautiful price, though, for gold. That's really where it deserves to be. Um, definitely, look, I mean, this is basically an all-time high, right? It was there at about 2083. Let's see if we hover on this. The high was 2049.50. Just want to see the exact high for gold there. 2075, right? And now here, we got to 2146 on, on the week, right? Yeah, so 2146, the highest gold that's ever been in the history of the human race. Pretty crazy, right? I mean, that's an amazing feat. Shoulder, head, right shoulder. And again, gold's going to continue. And we saw this flag that played out, number one. Just want to put that out. But gold's going to continue to outperform. You know what I mean? As they continue to print the dollar. I mean, that's just what happens when you have a scarce asset. We did hit the top of the channel. Do we come back down? Let's see. If gold can break, you know, I mean, that's really no, no, if gold can break, I guess you could say it broke its resistance. It's almost in price discovery. So now we have to say that's resistance like right there at about 2138. Just looking for gold to break above that. Once it does, I mean, there's really no stopping it, right? It's going to be in price discovery and you look for free fall for the dollar and the gold and gold to just continue to pump, right? Anyway, that's your weekly analysis on gold, on S&P futures, on the DXY, on the market cap of Tether. And so that's your, let's edit that. And so that's your weekly analysis with gold. And that's it, folks. That's your weekly analysis for gold, for S&P futures, for the DXY, for Tether dominance, for Bitcoin dominance, for total three, the market cap of all the altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, for total, the market cap of all the altcoins and Bitcoin included, and Bitcoin, which is continuing to pump here at 44,066, making a move out of the four-hour falling wedge to the upside. There is a resistance here. If Bitcoin gets about 44,115, its next major resistance is 45,102, and then you're going for 47,681, all right? Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. You can find out when I post my next video. And if you came to the channel, then you're already doing the right thing. Crypto is life. If you want to join my trading group and learn more, jump into CryptoLifer.com and see for yourself what's going on. I can't wait to see you there.